She has survived attempted assassinations and Taliban death threats. We'll speak to Afghanistan's top female politician and we'll examine the legacy of another woman in power the last months for Michelle Obama as First Lady. I'm Martin Stanford. This is Insight. Welcome to Insight. There are very few politicians in the world that have shown the determination and the bravery of my first guest. The 19th child of a family in northeast Afghanistan, she was left out in the sun the day she was born, unwanted as a girl, but didn't expect her to survive. But survival has defined her from that first day to now, when, as the country's top female politician and a campaigner for women's rights, she's faced repeated assassination attempts by the Taliban. She's Fazia Kufi, and she joins me now from the Afghan capital, Kabul. Fazia Kufi, of all the changes you've managed to bring to your country, which are you most proud of? Well, I guess the life uh, that I have been through, not only me, but uh, thousands and hundreds of other women in Afghanistan, have been through throughout our, our, throughout our history in different stages of their the political changes, women have been the, the main victims of any political changes. That changes that I have seen, most of it was not a positive change. It actually gave me more reasons and more determination. And in fact, the life that I have been through personally also gave me enough reasons to stand, uh, to defend uh, what I believe in is the equality the equality for uh, genders, especially women's rights. Because when you talk about gender equality globally, you always see that there is a, a lack of equality when it comes to women, social, political, and economical participation globally. But in countries like Afghanistan or developing countries and countries like Afghanistan where only 15 years ago, it was so difficult for a woman to get out of her home and walk freely in the streets of Kabul without the fear of being beaten up by Taliban or other groups. That was a kind of a dream come true for women after 15 years now that they are politicians or they are teachers or they are doctors, they are active in social life. It really need, um, needed a lifetime kind of struggle and a lot of uh, resources to, to put for this struggle. And I think anywhere in the world, when you really work for women's rights, it's like you climb a mountain and you're happy that you actually finish climbing a mountain and you see there is another big mountain in front of you that you have to climb. Each time you have to really put a lot of, um, uh, a lot of pressure on yourself to change something. And you know, uh, in countries like my country, um, it's not easy as a politician because you're losing so many other things when you actually stand on what you believe in. Sometimes even your own family members, your own friends, your supporters in the family, in the, in the parliament or in the political arena start questioning and start opposing you. And you start kind of doubting your own values. Am I going in the right direction or not? Because the things you do is, is so difficult that put you in a position that you feel basically lonely. You feel that you are the only person. But when you achieve something and you see that people who actually opposed you at certain point, now they are supporter or they believe that you did something right, right for, for women or you did something good. And then you start believing that you are doing something good to change, uh, to change, to change others' life. Because I think to struggle for women's rights or to struggle for equality in this part of the world, countries like Afghanistan, it's easy to talk in front of the camera. It's easy to talk in, in the hotels and big uh, ceremonies, but it's so difficult to bring it into practice when you're in the villages, when you're out of the big cities and you really want to work for a change. So how frustrating is it for you that some parts of Afghanistan appear to be going backwards and you're going to have to climb that hill all over again, or women like you are? It is not easy. It is not easy. It is frustrating when you uh, take so many things for granted after like 12 or 15 years of struggle. You basically think that certain things are not for grant now for granted for women. For instance, you think that um, women's access to education, for women, for young girls to go to school, for women to participate in their social lives as voters or political lives as voters or as people who get votes from people. These are issues that are now for granted after 15 years of 
uh, you know, a lot of international support and Afghan governments and Afghan people struggle for equality. You think these are like issues that are sorted out. But it's very much frustrating when you see at the end of the day that when there is fighting, the first school that is being attacked is a girls' schools. The first um, uh, schools that are closed down is a girls' school. The first teachers that are being attacked are female teachers, for instance. You see that, 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 that the female voters are not being uh, net, are not let to go out of their families or out of their homes and vote and exercise their basic rights, which is the rights to political participation. It is frustrating. Or even when you see in the parliament, your male uh, parliamentarians are debating issues that really hurts you as a human being, it hurts you. For, for instance, we were just discussing today uh, the anti-harassment law for women and harassment against women is a major issue in Afghanistan, not only in the public place, but also in education and working environment. So we wanted to draft a law and make it, a, bring it to the debate so that it becomes kind of a crime if, if people simply harass a woman, be it sexually or verbally or, you know, whatever uh, harassment, it's a crime. And it was interesting when you see some of your male colleagues, if they come to you and they tell, they tell you, that yes, there is harassment because the women are not wearing appropriate clothes. You have to wear appropriate clothes so that you don't invite harassment. It's hurting. You, you see that kind of perspective from people. You expect them to be high level, for instance. You expect them to be in the parliament. So therefore, I think it's very much frustrating when you see at the end of the day that you have to really climb. It really needs shoulder for you to climb this mountain again. Even in your parliament, which I think has quotas, so there are a quite a high proportion of women MPs. Not every woman agrees with you. So what do you have to do to persuade them that women's rights matter? Well, Afghanistan is ranking the 22nd country in the world in terms of having more female members of parliament. Uh, by percentage, we have 27 percent, and I think that's a great achievement because you have to ensure quantity representation that eventually will lead to quality representation. So that's, I think, a first big step, and it is a right that Afghan constitution has given to Afghan women. But as I said, um, these parliamentarians are also at the end of the day politicians. And when you work for women's rights, which is a, an issue very sensitive and, and uh, to the great extent politicized in Afghanistan. If all, all women stand by this, I sh I'm sure that they have to face many challenges, including challenges in their constituents. There might be people who will stand against them and will not continue to support them. Or they might have received uh, support from certain leaders during their elections, not for the agenda of women's rights, for their own agenda. So it's, it's very common, I think, globally that that not all women actually stand for women's rights. But I think there are um, now there is more unity in the parliament uh, among women, which is a good uh, message. But I think the main challenge still remains the fact that everything is so centralized to the parliament and to Kabul. When you just get out of the, Kabul, the city, out of the capital, still, you know, you see that uh, access to education for girls is a major challenge, although we have 40 percent of our, the total number of uh, students uh, in Afghanistan are girls, but um, uh, considering to the eligible number of girls that go to school, still a huge challenge because we don't have uh, safe um, schools, uh, families will not allow them, there is no enough uh, books and stationaries, there is no space for even school, p children study under the sun, uh, you know, uh, shed or even under the cold winter with no space. Um, you know, there is um, also violence of any kind uh, every day, unfortunately. We see on the media uh, a horrible case of uh, women's rights violation and violence to the extent that sometimes they cut uh, the nose of the woman, they cut the ear, they kill the woman brutally. So this is not, uh, you know, uh, Kabul is not Afghanistan. You get out of Kabul, women don't uh, um, have access to economical resources. In fact, they think that whatever life they have been through is their right. That's what they are entitled to. You talk about all these uh, basic freedoms that a woman is entitled to have, like, for instance, a right to ha um, access economic resources. They wouldn't believe you. They think, how can I stand against my husband and mm. go to work and have access to 
uh, to money, for instance, because they think that's their life. Even if they are beaten up, they have to keep quiet because that's their that's the, that's their life. So and I, I think it. to change that perspective, it doesn't. Sorry to interject. I was just going to ask you about events the other side of the world. It is possible in a week's time the United States might have elected its first female president. You were frustrated, I think, when you wanted to apply for that job in your country because the rules were changed and they said you were ineligible. Do you think there will come a time when you can apply? Well, I think the world is now changing. If, uh, if um, you know, United States could have a female uh, president, and if the UK could have a second female uh, prime minister, and if our, in our neighboring countries like Pakistan and India and Bangladesh, that are part of South Asia, even Sri Lanka, could have female presidents and prime ministers, it's not a question that we have to take out of our mind. It's something that we have to keep in our mind. Because I know that there have been women who struggled, who paved the way for others. For instance, Hillary Clinton, she ran in 2009. She was not elected. But now she has all the chances to get elected. So it's a struggle. Uh, there is nothing for granted. There is nothing wrong. I think we have to continue to work for it. You know, it might not be possible in one year, two years, ten years, I don't know how many years, but one day we have to make it possible because we have to really make this country. And I'm sure if one day um, uh, this country is run by a woman, many things will change. First of all, Afghanistan image to international community. This is a big change for Afghanistan, and I think it will um, help Afghanistan economically and also politically and socially greatly, because many countries will start to change their perspective and start a new partnership with Afghanistan, which will be a good opportunity for Afghanistan. Inside, there will be more connection with people, because, you know, many studies and surveys indicate that female politicians are more connected with their people. I'm not uh, kind of ignoring or disrespecting our male parliamentarians, but even in Afghanistan, there has been surveys that indicated women are more attached and more connected to their pe people. And I think if we uh, present a leadership that can change Afghanistan, uh, Afghanistan's international image, in the meantime be connected to its people, I think that that's a leader with people of Afghanistan want. Yes, it's but difficult, but um, why are we going always on the, on the roads that is paved? We have to climb those mountains, as I mentioned earlier. Fazia Kufi, thank you very much for your time today. This is Insight, coming up from Kabul to Washington. We'll examine the legacy of another influential woman as Michelle Obama prepares to leave the White House.